The birth of your baby will perhaps be the most memorable, exciting, and life-changing event you will ever experience. And it's something you've anticipated for a very long time. Think seriously about how you want the special event to feel for you and make plans now. Jot down notes as your baby grows. Then create a birth plan and share it with everyone involved in your care. Some things are beyond your control. Nature will take its course and your plans may have to change a bit during the event itself. Having a birth plan makes you look at what your options are out there, how much participation you want of your family. It helps you make decisions in your health care for both you and your unborn baby and your baby once it's born. First, decide where you want to give birth, in the hospital, a birthing center, or at home, and discuss these options with your physician. You also need to decide who will be there to support you and when. It's better to do it ahead of time instead of waiting to the last minute. Some decisions that you're making, um, that you're considering is who should be there with me when I'm in labor? Um, you know, do you want your significant other? Do you want the father of the baby there? Do you want your mother, your sister, whoever? Think of your labor in stages. Who will be in the room during early labor? And who stays once labor progresses? Think about what type of techniques will calm and comfort you. Maybe you want the lights dimmed with soft music playing acupressure, a warm shower maybe. And think about medication in advance. Under what circumstances do you want pain medication and what kind? Those supporting you need to know how you feel about being induced with drugs designed to speed up labor, what wishes you have if a cesarean section is needed, and what about labor progress checks and fetal monitoring. If you don't want an episiotomy, let your physician and caregivers know that. Once you're in labor, that's really not a good time to be making a lot of decisions um, because you're, you're in pain, you're worried about yourself, you're worried about your baby. There's a lot of concerns that you have going on in your head. So it's a good idea to start thinking about these things prior to going into labor, prior to coming to the hospital. You'll also want to choose your birthing position. Most women lie on their backs semi-reclined, but some stand up, some lie on their sides, others squat or get down on their hands and knees. Once the baby is born, the birth plan doesn't end. One procedure you may want to consider shortly after birth is banking your baby's umbilical cord blood. Your baby's cord blood is a valuable, non-controversial source of stem cells, the building blocks of our blood and immune systems. Storing your newborn's cord blood means that should there be a need, your baby will have a source of stem cells that is an exact match with no risk of rejection. These stem cells also have the potential to treat siblings and other family members. You also need to be familiar with the newborn testing that will take place right after birth. Some routine checks can be delayed if you don't want to interrupt these first precious moments with your newborn. It's strongly encouraged that before you ever even get into your second or third trimester that you come up with a birth plan, write those thoughts and ideas down, share those with your physician, share them with people at the hospital. We may be able to give you other thoughts and ideas that are going to work for you versus what you are wanting to do. To learn more about creating your own birth plan, visit our website at www.forbaby.com and click on Checklists. This is my wife, Amber, and our youngest daughter, Trinity, and our oldest, Paris, and this is Taylor. Taylor got sick shortly a year after her first birthday, and then um, we found out it was leukemia. We heard about Viacord through our oncologist. We decided to store Trinity's cord blood and on the off chance that we would need it. And, uh, and it turns out we did. They made it very easy for us to, uh, to store the cord blood. Everything about it was just, went perfect. When Taylor relapsed this last time, they gave us less than a 20% chance of survival. Now that we're at 14 months, they're telling us that it's less than a 5% chance that, that she'll ever be sick again. The best time to find out about cord blood preservation, I think, is if you're gonna plan a family. To go from a 20% chance of survival to a 5% chance of her ever getting sick again is entirely via cords doing, entirely. Without that, I don't know where we would be. Mm -hmm.